Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the brown scapular and why you should be wearing one. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the history of the brown scapular, the story of St. Simon Stock, and what are the promises for those people who do wear the brown scapular? We are very blessed because on the show today, we have a very special guest, Steve, and one of his best friends, St. Simon Stock. <laughs> Through his intercession... And this first class relic, may God bless our time discussing the beauty and the power of the brown scapular. Steve, it's great to have you on our show. Steve is from scapulars.com and uh, Father Rich. I can't believe you just threw that up there. I mean, like the first class relic of St. Simon Stock, who we'll yeah, we do that. you know, That's cool. learn a little bit more about later. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to share the surprise of this. And here at St. John Paul II, you know, St. John Paul II expressed that the scapular is a synthesis of the Carmelite spirituality. And we are so blessed to have Steve on the show to hear about the work that he's doing to promote scapulars. And I am so grateful for your work from the very beginnings of my reversion, a scapular was entrusted and I was clothed with the scapular and the devotion there. And so I'm really looking forward to kind of remembering that and then sharing more deeply about what the scapular is in the history of the church and what are the fruits from devoutly, devoutly using that and wearing it. So, you know, for those who don't know what the scapular is, the scapular is a very de popular devotion in the Catholic Church. Um, and it's something that I can't stress enough that every Catholic should have, should wear. Uh, Steve, like your company's tagline for scapulars.com is don't be caught dead without one. Uh, that's a perfect <laughs> tagline for this because the um, the promises that those who faithfully wear the scapular throughout their life and uh, how that will assist them in their death and in their salvation. Very important. So why don't we get into the history of the scapular so we can understand, you know, what its spirituality is connected to, why it's so important, why every Catholic should wear one. So uh, Steve, again, really, we appreciate you joining us. Um, we love scapulars.com. They really are the very best scapulars you can buy on the market today. They are, they're beautiful, incredibly comfortable and really the kind of, I guess, the attention that the attention to details that scapulars should have gotten a long time ago. So thanks for doing that. But why don't you tell us a little bit about where the scapular comes from, who St. Simon Stock was, the Carmelites, and how we ended up with the brown scapular as a devotion in the church? Sure. Thanks. It's great to be here. And um, so the, the history of the scapular comes from um, it starts in, in Mount Carmel. So the scapular itself was not given to the order in Mount Carmel, but the Carmelites started uh, in the Holy Land. And uh, after the, um, when the Muslims were, were retaking the Holy Land, uh, the Carmelite order, which um, was founded on Mount Carmel, um, and they actually built a chapel there and had a Byzantine icon of Our Lady of, uh, Our Lady Star of the Sea. And they dedicated this chapel um, as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Um, although she had never appeared there. When they were um, moved out of the Holy Land for safety reasons, they ended up around Europe. Most ended up in England, where St. Simon Stock, um, who became the prior general um, in the middle of the uh, 1200s, um, he was praying for protection on the order because there were many other relatively new orders in the church at the time. And they were um, there was questions of whether or not you know, this order should even survive or they should join others. And uh, they were made fun of a little bit for their um, striped, black and white striped Bedouin uh, garb. And uh, he prayed for a special protection. He wrote the Flos Carmeli prayer, which the Carmelites pray to this day. And he was asking for a special protection from Our Lady. And she responded by appearing to him and giving him um, the brown scapular, saying, wear this as a sign of protection for your order. Um, and anyone who dies wearing this scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. It'll be a sign of salvation um, and a constant protection throughout your life. Mm -hmm. So um, the scapular was given as a gift. Now scapulars were common at the time in other religious orders. They're worn over the habit kind of as an apron to 
you know, if you're working in the fields, you could actually wipe your hands on it. It, it kept your clothing clean, but it's a sign um, that that the those who wore the scapulars were ready to serve uh, and ready and willing um, to serve God in any way, whether it was spiritually or physically. And so the brown scapular was not worn, and it was given as a gift to Saint Simon to the order. And it's a it's they still wear it today. Many orders still wear scapulars today, where it covers the front side of their body and the back side, and it, and it rests over the shoulders. That's the um, the monastic scapular. And over centuries, um, the scapular, um, as as people joined the the order in a third order um, sense, where they became the lay faithful that were associating themselves with the spirituality of that particular order. The um, many people would wear part of the habit to show their allegiance to the charism and spirituality of the order. And the, the third order Carmelites started wearing a much smaller version of the scapular um, front and back. <clears throat> Centuries later with the reformation of the Carmelite order, um, there were two branches, the Calist and the Discalced Carmelites. And in well, order to differentiate mean? them. What does that oh, mean, so, Calist and Discalced? Sure, so the, um, the, now let me see now, <laughs> discalced Carmelites, um, I believe are the ones who wore shoes and the calced Carmelites were the ones who did not. And um, I, I'm not exactly sure why, um, I forget <laughs> the, uh, the origin, perhaps it's because they had calluses on their feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> so in order to differentiate the two, they started wearing the, the symbol of their branch of the order. And that's where the images of the scapular started to appear on the scapular. And what are those images that appear on the scapular? Well, those first images were the shield of the order. So the, the shield of the calced or the shield of the discalced. But um, over time, other images have, um, have appeared in the Carmelites. Uh, the Carmelite order says that any holy image or no image at all um, can be can be put on the scapular. So it's typical to find um, either the promise of Our Lady on the scapular or perhaps an image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel or an image of her giving a scapular to St. Simon Stock. But those came many centuries later. Awesome. So the 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 scapular that was given to St. Simon Stock was one of the big ones that went over his habit. Yes. Right. Okay. Exactly. Did, and they wore them over the habit, not underneath, because a lot of people wear a scapular around their neck and it's under underneath their shirt. But that's how it's worn today, correct? Right. Well, the, the uh, monastic orders still wear them over their habits, but right. the devotional scapulars for the lay faithful and others um, will wear them underneath their clothing as kind of a, well, it's a, more of a private devotion. It's a sign of, of consecration to Our Lady. And one of the yeah. aspects that Steve was mentioning, you know, how these little, the, the little fabric started to be used by these third order Carmelites, that started when, you know, monks and these Carmelites would cut a little bit of their own habit and share it with the, the lay faithful. And that started generating a great devotion um, to the Carmelite spirituality. And I think it would be really important to kind of recognize also like the Carmelite order as it relates to spirituality in the Catholic church and the heritage of spirituality is Absolute immense. Giants. It, they are giants in the history of the church. You think about St. John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Therese, Therese the Little Flower, right? Oh. And their spiritualities that influenced our great Pope, St. John Paul II, right? St. Edith he, Stein, he, Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Exactly. Edith Stein as well. I mean, incredible giants in the faith. And the spirituality of the Carmelites, as St. John Paul II, is synthesized in the habit and what the habit represents. So the fact that we as as lay, you know, as as people who are not in the Carmelite order, the fact that we could participate devotionally by wearing a scapular is is really an action of spirituality. Is there any like requirement of I know like so you've got third order, you know, folks who are doing this first and now like it's kind of more widespread in terms of being able to reach people on the internet, like you're doing to wear a scapular. Is there, um, any like, uh, fraternal obligation through wearing the scapular because I yeah, know and who's allowed to wear a lot them. of devotional. What's that? And who's allowed to wear them? Are, is anyone just allowed to get a scapular and put it yeah. on? Yeah. Usually there's conditions or maybe like prayers or joining something or something like that. Right. 
Sure. So to, to become a member of the confraternity, um, a Catholic priest has to um, say a prayer over the person receiving the scapular. And um, I have a, a, just a little version here, but there's the vesting prayer is um, it, it's in this little prayer card. It's not very long. Um, it can be prayed in the native language or, or in Latin. Um, but it's it's a, a way to invest. So a person becomes it's almost like receiving the habit of the Carmelite order. Um, and then so there's there's two sides to this to this promise of the scapular and, and not just that if you wear this, you know, it's a get out of hell free card. But yeah. you are promising on your part to live the virtues according to your state in life of the Carmelite order. And and in turn, Our Lady is promising your salvation um, should you you know remain in that state. And so who can wear this? Um, the, the, a priest can enroll any Catholic um, in the um, in the confraternity of the scapular. So um, this has been extended from the Carmelite order to the third order Carmelites now by the by the church to any lay faithful in the church. Wow. So the virtues talk a little bit about that. I mean, they could, the, the Carmelite way of life. I mean, we've got. The Carmelites, uh, by and large, are a cloistered monastery, right? They have uh, some things they do out in public, some teach, some sing, you know. But, you know, the virtues of that, I mean, are they asking us to, like, be monks around our house or what? Like, what's the, the thing here? Why are you, so, are you considering, like, enrolling and investing all of your children to well, exercise silence and... Well, I was just thinking for myself, there is no silence in my house. <laughs> this might be a good thing. <laughs> uh, no silence in my house either with nine children. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, he's got um, you beat, Ryan. I know. Good for him. So um, the obligations. So Our Lady promised... Um, she promised protection to those who um, would live according to their state in life, the virtues of the Carmelite order. Um, so living, living in that, those virtues. So I, there, it's kind of hard to answer that question because there are no specific um, prom and no specific list of things. You must do this. You must do this. You must do this in order to wear the scapula and receive that primary promise of the scapula other than you must live that Christian life. And, and it's a it's a constant dedication to Our Lady. So when Our Lady, when you're wearing the scapular, you're you're constantly you've consecrated your life to her and everything in your life, you know, in put in, in her hands. And so that includes your salvation and that includes your your work and your prayers. Um, so it's not something where you can simply put it on and, and not live a Christian life and still expect to receive the graces um, of the scapular. Yeah, uh, it's not it's, a magic. It it's not a magic talisman that you're like, okay, well, you get to the gates of heaven and St. Peter's, like, turn around, and you're like, haha, trump card. You know, it doesn't work I, like that. I think a lot of people, um, and this is a very important part of this conversation. I think a lot of people do look at sacramentals and devotional things and, and the promises. I think it, spiritually, it's dangerous to approach those with the promise at hand and, and yet still understand, you know, the, the, the participation that you have within that, because, you know, a lot of people can be confused. Like, Oh, I just put this on and I go to heaven. Like what? That's dumb. Like, I mean, why would I even want to do that? You know I mean? It's like, doesn't make any sense rationally. And so that kind of, that kind of thought actually casts doubt on whether the scapular is, is authentic or, or has any value whatsoever. And, and yeah. that would make sense if that was all it took. Right. Um, but if you look at the Old Testament and all of the covenant agreements with God, there's a strong party and there's a weak party. God is the strong party. He establishes his, his credentials. I am the Lord, you know, your God. I brought you out of Egypt. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he, he lists his credentials. And then he says, um, you keep my commandments and I will do these things for you. Right. Those were promises. Promise. But, and God is always faithful to his promises. He keeps his end of the bargain. We must keep ours. And this is the same type of situation. Our lady in this case is the strong party. And, right. and she is making these promises to us coming you know, through her by God. She will keep up her end of the bargain if we keep up ours. Yeah. And that would be going to mass, confession, you know, prayer, just the, you know, the basic, you know, actions of a Christian to unite themselves to God and to the, the, the community and the family around them. Yeah, exactly. just like an staying indulgence. close to the sacraments, staying in the state of grace. Yeah. yeah, just like an indulgence, you can't just say a certain prayer and get an indulgence. There is the conditions of 
you know, having had confession, having communion, being in a state of grace, right? Uh, saying prayers for the Holy Father. There are those conditions on that. So it's not a magic formula. It's really saying that if you are living this lifestyle, this is a sign and a way to bind you to that lifestyle. It is not working, again, as an effect. It is a sign of your of your uh, devotion and your willingness to live the lifestyle that would warrant those types of promises, right? It's your sign. It's your way to seal a covenant to these promises. Right. I mean, and, but, and it's yes, very it's, formal. Like it's a, vo- it's a formal investiture. It's a formal way of life. It's, it's entering into culture. And this is a sacramental of that culture. It's a visible sign. And I think it would be really good for the conversation to open up the catechism chapter four on other liturgical celebrations, article one under sacramentals, as it should be known different than the sacraments. So there are seven sacraments in the Catholic church. We know those, but there are also many other sacramentals. The sacramentals, for example, uh, Paul in the Acts of the Apostles, you know, what was being used was like his handkerchief or, or like a cloth. And that was being used devoutly, and people were receiving actual grace and devotion. We can see the scapular in a similar way. In reference number 1670, sacramentals do not confer the grace of the Holy Spirit in the way that the sacraments, the seven sacraments do, but by the church's prayer, they prepare us to receive grace and dispose us to cooperate with it. It's the whole sense of cooperation that the habit is representative of, but it also carries a certain substance of grace, that there there is a grace to the promise of abiding by the virtues of chastity in one's state in life, of detachment, you know, of of these senses of Carmelite virtues that Steve is sharing is very important. Quote, for well-disposed members of the faithful, the liturgy of the sacraments and sacramentals sanctifies almost every event of their lives with the divine grace, which flows from the Paschal mystery of the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. From this source, all sacraments, all sacramentals draw their power. They're scarcely in proper use of material things, which cannot be thus directed toward the sanctification of men and the praise of God. That's that in essence, that's what the catechism is teaching about sacramentals. That's what we're talking about in the effect of this one sacramental in particular, a very powerful one in the brown scapula. Yeah, but like some other sacramentals would be holy water, blessed salt, um, a rosary, you know, if it's been blessed. There's there's a lot of sacramentals that uh that again, sacraments have grace as a direct conduit. Sacramentals you know, lowercase s, prepare us to enter into that. They are a way to remind us to approach the sacraments, capital S sacraments, in a devout way. They're a way to bind us in our day-to-day life to vows, promises that we make, and to give us the the, the closeness of holiness through the sacramentals that we can carry with us as a person. Like, I remember— What about wedding rings? You guys, the three of you are, are married. What about your wedding rings? Yep. Like, oh, Brian, are you wearing your wedding ring? <laughs> so yeah i mean they're I blessed on the- fix once i uh i opened a beer with it and it <laughs> popped like the bottom popped and i had to go to the jewelry store to get it fixed but that was only once I don't do it anymore. I, I bought that's, a, that's I such bought a perfect. A that's such a perfect uh <laughs> analogy for your marriage <laughs> <laughs> so, Father Rich, how often do you have people approach you asking you to uh, say this and, in, in, um, you know, this prayer to have them join the confraternity? Does that happen often at your parish? It, it happens often for sure. But I, where I find it happening the most, in my first assignment at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in Palm Coast, just 15, 20 minutes south of me, there was a Carmelite order. So, oh. and they had third order Carmelites in my parish, third order Carmelites all throughout the county. So that type of de- de- devotion was generated. So any, cl- any clergy member, any cleric, including deacons, can actually and effectively invest you in, the, in this, in this uh, confraternity. 
And see, now I've heard the, different. I've heard Deacon specifically cannot invest you in the Brown scapular confraternity. From, from what, what, from I, was what reading, I read and, and from the from the research from a, you know from a Carmelite priest, um, you know that was that was referenced. So oh, maybe you know, I could be wrong. Right. Yeah, I mean it would be worth looking into. Uh, yeah. I mean, Steve, do you know there, Steve? Uh, Steve, yes, I believe. Know? I believe the church has extended that uh, privilege of, of investing someone in the scapula to deacons as well. Okay. Th- th- those in the clerical state. And, and it's, it's important to realize too, sacramentals and, and the action of blessing as the catechism states too, um, you know, lay people have authority as well. Think about a godparent, think about a mom or a dad, you know, you, you have authority in virtue of your baptism, living out your baptism with this, with this role and responsibility. Um, you know, I, I hold on to my grandmother, my great grandmother's rosary, not only has it been blessed, but it's also been prayed in her hands. And in that authority and lineage, there's actual grace there. And there's a tie deeply spiritually, uh, to that type of a sacramental. Um, so that's something to, to realize is that as a deacon, a deacon is given authority and, and faculty to perform pastoral functions in the, in the church. And this is certainly one of those functions. I know that my grandmother, whenever one of us were born, one of the, like, well, number one, she would tell my mom, those kids are not allowed out of the house until they're baptized, but she would come in and put a brown scapular, you know, on the crib, in the nursery, underneath the mattress of it. That was like the first thing, like, if this kid's gonna, you know, gestorben and have a, you know, at least, you know, that scapular, that's, that was like her thing. And then I had a great, I had a great aunt who was actually a Carmelite, a cloistered Carmelite nun, lived to like 104. And wow. when she died, all she had was like a pen, a couple pictures and a scapula. Those were her only possessions in the world. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. So I think that that kind of devotion to put a scapula in the children, child's room or something, um, even though that child, of course, uh, after baptism is completely pure, yeah. um, that there, there is Our Lady promised protection throughout life as well as um, in death. And so um, it's, it's, Similar to putting a blessed metal, I guess, in, in mm-hmm. someone's room or in the proximity, um, blessed salt, holy water. Um, so in that sense, yeah, it's it's a, there is there is um, actual grace there. And as you mentioned, Father, the grace um, it, you were talking about, you mentioned that um, it pre, it disposes us um, to to this. So it's not just that we have to hold up our end of the bargain and there's no help on the other side. There is help. That's Amen. the actual grace, Amen. and it's it's a divine protection that um, that we that we carry with us by wearing the scapular there all the time. And how how interesting that it's over our heart too, you know. And, and what a beautiful beautiful connection where it lays. And I I still and at our recall backs. the many and on our backs, like looking out for our backs. And that's uh, where the where and my my the one that I had it actually had the promise on the back, and then on the front was uh, Saint Simon Stock. Dang. Um, yes, where, where, where he right was here. receiving the scapular from Our Lady. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I've got to I've got to ask Steve because I've had a ton of scapulars in my life, and I remember them very fondly. In fact, I have all of them in a little treasure box that that I carry all of my religious artifacts. Uh, from memory over the past like 20, 22 years and longer, you know, even the stuff that I've received as a kid. But um, one thing that that has been disappointing for me is all of my scapulars broke because they popped. And then, you know, like you tie them or you clip them and you, you know, so you're actually in in the business of, of making scapulars and really propagating and, and promoting this devotion um, what makes your scapular different than every other scapular through the in the history of the church? Well, thanks. Um, I think after 20 years of complaining of the same thing, <laughs> poor quality scapulars, and I was asking other people, hey, can you guys make a better one, please? Um, <laughs> and nobody would do it. Uh, so I, I finally said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Um, and, and really for myself <laughs> and for my family and for everybody else. And so it took years to actually develop and design. To, there's basically three or two or three or four common questions or problems that everyone has with their scapular. The stitching's terrible. The, the wool is uncomfortable. Um, my, the metals I put on them wear through the cord. And so I thought, you know what, if... If, if we can find a way to fix those three problems, we could actually help revive the scapular tradition. And so after many trials and errors, 
um, came up with a design. Um, we use we use merino wool. So merino wool comes from ours comes from Australia. It's very soft, um, and and sometimes that. Um, is a big question mark with the faithful. They're like, well, it's supposed to be uncomfortable and, and irritating. Um, <laughs> and uh, because they're confusing them with hair shirts. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I tell those people, you know, well, scapulars are worn over the clothing, not under. So they weren't meant to be underneath initially in the beginning. But for penitent souls like yourself, we're going to make a nice, really rough hair shirt a whole line of hair shirts for you that you can wear underneath there. It's like and, an introduction um, to a hair shirt. <laughs> Just right. a little bit. It's a baby step. So um, we we figured out a way to design it, um, to put the cords inside, fold the wool over it, um, make it super strong. It's It doesn't break. Um, these, I, and then, mine would explode if I even tried to do what you're doing. Yeah, we <laughs> I've tested them attempt. for exactly how much weight can go, you know, can these can pull. Um, and in order to, because everyone likes to wear their favorite metals, um, what I thought we would do is we would design it in such a way that you could put the metal inside the scapular. Oh, nice. So it goes directly, this each side is a pocket in and of itself. Beautiful. And it doesn't actually touch the wool. Um, I use the front side in a, in a such a way that's a pocket so that it doesn't wear through the wool either. Hmm. Um, and that's that's really kind of solving all of that, the main problems, um, they're uncomfortable, they break all the time. Um, and it doesn't, my metals, you know, wear through the cord. So, so solve those you, three problems. If you, if you have one that broke, you, you just got to go get the, per, you have to go get the prayer set over you again, or you have to get, uh, blessed. It's gotta be blessed. No. And that's the unique thing about the scapular is that because you're being enrolled in a habit, um, the blessing rests on the, the person, not on the scapular. So okay. you can certainly have your scapular blessed, but to be enrolled, you have to be blessed. So when your scapular breaks or, or um, you know, comes off, you put another one on, um, you, you still are wearing that scapular. You're enrolled in that promise. You don't have to be re-enrolled and the scapular doesn't have to be blessed for that reason. Gotcha. So where, where can people find the scapulars that you're making? Because really they, like I said, I've seen that they are, amazing quality and definitely the kind of scapula that if you want to have this devotion for a long time and share with your family, these are the kinds that you want. So the best way of course, is the website scapulars.com. Um, more and more online Catholic um, outlets are, are picking them up and uh, selling them as well because they're, they're very popular um, with the faithful. So mm -hmm. our first, our first job is to introduce the, the best scapular that I think we, that could be made to the faithful who, who used to wear them or who wear them, but complain about those, those common problems. The next step is to um, start creating educational videos and other um, information to introduce the scapular to the vast majority of Catholics who really don't know what it is. Um, and that's um, part of the plan to, um, to basically uh, reinvigorate the scapular tradition, to bring it back um, to a large scale usage, um, which will take some education because of the common misconceptions that you guys have brought up already. Now, I have another big, I have another big issue and, and problem. And I'm sure that you've received this complaint as well. A lot of my, as, as an Italian, and I, I do get sweaty every now and then, you know, my, my scapular would really, you know, have like a fragrance and like it would get kind of the like sanctity of odor, the odor of sanctity. <laughs> the, uh, that's, I guess that's one way to put it. It's not. Uh, I've been around. It, you smell you, like a yak. <laughs> <laughs> a yak? A yak. Well, that's a first. I was going so, with the brown like, and shaggy you, theme. Can, can you wash it? Can you spritz it with Febreze like I do to <laughs> most of my clothes? <laughs> yes, you can wash these. Um, they're, the, the wool and everything is, is pre-shrunk. And, and actually, Merino um, has a, a certain antibacterial quality, so it shouldn't smell as bad. But you can wash them anytime. Um, you can also, um, if you want to put a little frankincense oil on them or something, keep Ooh, them fresh. Nice. <laughs> That's a great idea. I like that smell better than yak. Frankincense <laughs> and chrism. Right. Yeah, the, there was the fourth wise man who brought yak musk and they, they wrote him out of the Bible. <laughs> now, 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 looking before through we your go, website, Steve, oh, I gotta, I gotta say, looking through your website, my brother, you've got like the one that you held up that that image of of Jesus and uh, on the M, which is a traditional, uh, you know, Mary at the foot of the cross. But you have some beautiful designs and colors and the in in various scapular designs. It's really impressive. 
Yeah, thanks. So we, there are others, and, and here's, for example, here's a here's one. Now this is um, it's blue and white, but the brown the back is still brown wool, and so some people say, well, is that a brown scapular? And and it is. It's just the image on top that's not. But this is the image of Our Lady Mount Carmel. That's cool. Um, some of the flowers on there. My my daughter, who's an artist, um, has designed them. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and so there's other um, yeah other designs that that have been made uh, that she's worked on. But yeah, so there are a number of different, but right now we only do brown scapulars. Now, before we go, I, I have a couple questions for you, Steve, but before we get into those, Father Rich, um, why don't you tell everyone about some of our other sponsors of the show, uh, along with scapulars.com, who is sponsoring this show and will be sponsoring our shows for the next month. Uh, there is a special promotional code that if you use ca or Catholic Talk 10, on scapulars.com, you get 10% off. So, Steve, thank you for extending that yeah. to our audience. We really appreciate that. I'll put that down below. So if you're looking to order a scapular, you know, as a gift or for yourself, you know, as we're coming up to Christmas, you can get that discount. And Steve's been gracious enough to offer that. But, Father, why don't you tell them about our other sponsors as well? Absolutely. Steve, thank you for your sponsorship from scapulars.com. We have amazing sponsors and great friends in the Catholic world. One of those friends and sponsors, Ave Maria University, where I definitely went through a number of scapulars because playing <laughs> on the sports fields of basketball, football, soccer, a number of them popped while in athletics. So I wish I had one of your scapulars, Steve, but Ave Maria University is a phenomenal Catholic university in this country, the number one in my opinion. And check out Ave Maria University. They have over 35 degrees. They have an incredible Catholic community. And it is a beautiful place set in southwest Florida, very close to the Everglades, very close to the beach. And it is just a natural paradise. But the best part about the university is the heart and devotion of its students, faculty, staff, and families that live there. The Catholic faith and the Catholic culture is very much alive. And if you know anybody exploring the possibilities of studying at a higher level, they have programs from undergrad to graduate to doctorate to PhD, uh, all sorts of types of offerings. So check out Ave Maria today. Another sponsor, Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is a 90-day program for men to detach from the world. One of the virtues that we talked about in this show is the virtue of detachment and then chastity in one state of life. This also, this program, Exodus 90, encourages the virtues of masculinity as it relates to chastity and discipline of the flesh, from cold showers to scriptural reflections, and the best part about it, developing a fraternity with other brothers that are seeking holiness is in itself a confraternity of enrollment, and they have had such great traction Tens of thousands of men have already gone through this program. I believe it's close to 40,000 or more now. Yeah. And little by little, this movement continues. So we want to give a big shout out to Exodus 90. And as we approach Advent, as we approach Lent, listen, these are times of developing a certain sense of austerity and practice. Check out Exodus 90 today. Yeah, so go to exodus90.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show. You can join our wait list there. Uh, you'll get the app for Exodus 90 free. It starts January 4th. So go to exodus90.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show. Now, I want to make a correction. The code that we have for scapulars.com is Talk Show 10. So T A L K S H O W 10. That will get you the 10% off on scapulars.com. So a couple of corrections there, my fault. Um, so now before we go, just a couple quick questions that I, I think a lot of people will have. Um, number one, what is the Sabatine privilege or what is that as it relates to the brown scapular, Steve? Sure. So the Sabatine privilege was something that was extended um, to the Carmelite order by the Holy Father um, um, within a hundred years after the gift of the brown scapular by Our Lady. And he... Uh, I think it was John the 22nd, um, received an apparition of Our Lady on behalf of the Carmelites and offered this special privilege that if those um, members who wear the scapular um, keep, again, um, their state in life, um, their, you know, keep the um, chastity according to their state in life, um, and then there's a certain prayers that go along with it that could be substituted with a rosary or some other things, um, that's something you have to look up the, the specific requirements that she would protect them in their life. And then after their death, 
take, go to purgatory and take everyone who wore the scapula devoutly and prayed those prayers out of purgatory to heaven on the first Saturday after their death. So it's called the Sabbatine privilege because of that Saturday grace. So die on a Friday is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or maybe on a Saturday, yeah, like John Paul the second. I was just going to go. I was just going to say that Steve is John Paul the second first Saturday divine mercy uh, <laughs> vigil. You know, I think yeah. there was a lot of promises there and he wore a scapular for a greater majority of his life. Yeah. Only in the Catholic <laughs> church can you die on a first, uh, first Saturday <laughs> and a Sunday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, that's an excellent point. So the, uh, another question is, Say you t- say you wear the scapula your whole life, and then you take it off for a second because you're getting in the shower. And then you get out of the shower, you slip, hit your head, and you die not right. wearing the scapula. What happens then? So, um, so God, our Father, is like the Father of the prodigal son. He's not waiting to condemn us and, and play gotcha. You're like, oh, you slipped up, you're going to hell. He is there waiting to forgive us, and he's waiting there to to grant this mercy as soon as we ask for it. So. If we wear this scapular devoutly, and I would imagine that Carmelites do not wear them in the shower. Um, they probably don't wear their habits yeah. in the shower. Can so you wear yours well. in the shower, though? Can you wear <laughs> oh, it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can, that. of course. Um, so, but the yeah, point Father is, is going to wear um, his in the shower, and it's going to smell like Axe body spray. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're sharing too much information about me. <laughs> <laughs> But the, um, the the point is that it is not um, it's not the scapula that saves you. It is God who saves you, and this is the um, it's a it's a sign of consecration to Our Lady. The consecration never ends, and so um, if that should happen, uh, then you know the it's again that ex, that's extended to you as as someone who has devoted his life to our Blessed Mother unconditionally. All right, and then Great. last question. I know there's a lot of different colors of scapulars. There is. The red, the blue, the white scapular. Uh, I, what I've read is that there's 18 different colors of approved scapulars. What are some of those? And you know, how can Catholics make sense of all these different colors of scapulars floating around in the church? Sure. Well, it's it's one thing that um, to to understand all about these scapulars. Another thing to know, for example, Saint Jose Maria Scriva said, um, "Pick two or three devotions and be faithful to them." Um, so in other words, you don't need a thousand devotionals or devotions in order to bring you closer to God. Each one is meant to do that. So pick a few and, and stay faithful to them. So the other scapulars, for example, there's a scapular of um, a Benedictine scapular. It's black or the um, which is similar to like being a third order Benedictine by wearing one of those um, and taking on their charism and spirituality. There's the, the green scapular, which was a gift to help with the conversions um, of others. And so to bring them back to the faith, back into the fold. Um, and like you said, there are 18 different kinds and they're all approved by the church and they all have different um, devotional aspects to them. And uh, there's even one scapular that um, some have put together. It's actually five different scapulars and they call it the five way or the five fold um, because they're the five perhaps most popular scapulars and Devotional prayers go along with some of them and, and others. It's a it's a state in life. Um, but people, you know, I think maybe they look at it and think, well, five times the grace, right? Five times <laughs> five scapulars. Um, but um, and I wouldn't have any problem with that. But I'd be careful, you know, to to wear every medal in the in the church <laughs> thinking you're going it's going to get you to heaven or something. Mr. Yeah, at T. One point, yeah, <laughs> walking around like the Catholic Mr. T with 68 medals on you and stuff and <laughs> One of my right. one of my brothers at Ave Maria, you know, he he was he had that. He had like so many saints all around this like big thick chain that he used to wear. <laughs> so Steve, you answered those questions perfectly. And my brothers and sisters at home, if you're listening in or viewing and you have a question in your head like, should I wear a scapular? The answer yes. is yes, right? <laughs> yes. Check out scapulars.com. Steve, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. And through the intercession of St. Simon Stock, who received this wonderful devotion, may Almighty God bless and prosper your ministry, Steve, and all of your beautiful, beautiful efforts to promote this wonderful devotion. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Mm